Hi, my name is Lloyd Norman. Thank you for joining me today as we talk about how to make resource capacity planning helpful to project managers. Project managers have a responsibility to manage project risk. In fact, I would submit it's one of their primary responsibilities. So how best to do that? We believe that tracking capacity risks is a fantastic way to reduce overall project delivery risk because capacity risks are always early indicators of delivery issues. If you're starting to see the kinds of issues uh, that I've highlighted here, where people can't pull up op, can't pull off of ops work in a timely fashion. If you're constantly waiting on shared services, if you're aware of key skills or people that are looking to leave your enterprise because they're uh, always being asked to do heroic efforts, working 60 to 70 hours a week consistently, then uh, you've come to the right place, and this is the right discussion because these kinds of capacity risks always, you know, portend other significant delivery risks, specifically in terms of schedule and budget. Stakeholders know this. Typically stakeholders, uh, this is not their first rodeo, so to speak. They will, in fact, focus on visible capacity risks, specifically availability risks, if they see them. The trick is, how do you make them easily visible and how can you easily mitigate these risks? We believe that by doing routine capacity planning, you will magnify all kinds of risks early. Um, if in fact, you as a, as a project manager go in and are updating the resource demand for your project on a regular basis, you will start to see immediately, oh, I'm gonna have an issue here in terms of time. This particular task is gonna push out. If it's on my critical path, I'm gonna be impacting the whole schedule, which in fact uh, is gonna impact my budget Am I going to uh, exceed whatever governance levels require me to get a, uh, you know, a, a change document in place? Um, all these kinds of risks here uh, can easily be juxtaposed against resource capacity in terms of how you plan it. It will, in fact, magnify your risk. So we recommend doing this uh, on a routine basis. Uh, the PMs that used to report to me had to do this at least monthly, but most of the time they're in there doing it uh, on a regular basis uh, anyway more frequently. Uh, so how do we make this easy? Hey, you use a, a shared system that's easy to adopt. Um, you wanna size your projects by team and role, which is also far easier than going in and putting people by tasks. Once you do this, uh, then you'll begin to get broad visibility easily for the PM's sake uh, across the whole enterprise. Anybody that has access to these or that gets uh, on the receiving end of automated reports will see these kinds of, uh, of issues. Uh, the interface here, we intentionally made it look like Excel deliberately, so it's easy to adopt, but far more capable, right? You can come in here and take resources of different kinds, map them on a common timeline, right? We recommend, again, not uh, starting at the named level. If they're the only resources available, then you can certainly do that. But start by saying, hey, I need this role. I need a business architect 25% of the time for seven months on the front end of this. I need these teams, right, for 50% of their time, you know, for the majority of this particular epic or feature. Um, our automation allows you to take teams of totally different velocities, uh, it, you know, from totally different arcs and map them on a common timeline with your uh, named resources, with your generic resources. You can immediately see when they're at risk of being over allocated, when they are over allocated, even though on your project, you're only using them half time, right? It means that on the back end, what, whoever their release train engineer or functional manager is, has over allocated them. And that's introducing risk to your particular project. You can look at these estimates by hour, by story point, by percentage of team, FTE, or you can look at it by cost because cost comes along for the ride. People and teams have rates. And again, the nice thing is by not assigning people to task, it streamlines your planning. It actually makes planning easier for the PM and improves their predictability. We see time and time again where uh, forecasts and predict predictability levels increase dramatically um, you know, when they stop putting people on task and they start planning, uh, doing this role-based planning at a project or at an epic level. Other things that PMs need to be doing is they need to be smart about uh, their portfolio alignment attributes, whatever they may be, unique to your organization. 
uh, strategic themes, strategic business objectives, uh, OKRs, uh, dependencies, those kinds of things. You need to be tracking those. It's important that your capacity be viewed and coordinated from this perspective so that portfolio knows how to prioritize your work and the people that are assigned to it. And that's really leads into this slide, which, which says, look, if you're doing this well, uh, portfolio is actually going to be on your team. They're actually going to be helping you to preserve your resources, budget and schedule because they're coordinating all work across the enterprise. Assuming that your colleagues are also sizing their work, whether it's ops work, epics or pro projects, you know, they can come in here and say, oh, OK, uh, you know, from a planning perspective, if we're going to move this out, we can in real time evaluate what the impacts are to resources and other interdependent projects downstream. Uh, our solution offers the capability for anybody with permission, project, portfolio, product uh, managers to virtually easily model um, the entire portfolio and come in here and play and say, what happens if we add two more people? What happens if we fat fatten this team? If we push this work, if we crash this work, you can do this at a task level. A PM can come in and say, hey, what happens if I push this task out? What are the implications? You see, capacity is the currency of coordination. It's how portfolios coordinate their work, right? Uh, and so your capacity will always be aligned to strategy and KPIs if you've sized it properly. You'll have portfolio management in there working on your behalf to virtually mitigate risks. And then you can adapt wisely to data driven adaptations, right? Have data driven discussions with the uh, functional managers that are providing resources for your system uh, and, and your solution. And this happens on an ongoing basis, right? This is not just a one time exercise. You know, as you go in and routinely do this, uh, you've got continuous visibility um, and collaboration to address emerging risks that come on, right? So this is not just a one time effort. Um, your uh, stakeholders have the opportunity to come in and subscribe to any aspect of project delivery. M you know, when milestones or financials change, allocations, um, those kinds of things, risks, they can receive a notification, as can you, uh, you know, from a PM perspective, if one of your um, stakeholders decides to come in and actually uh, sort of renege on promises and start taking resources on the back end from your work. All right. Much more we could talk about, but these are the kind of steps that you can take to easily make resource capacity planning helpful to PMs. They'll do it. It's easier for them to do it. Um, if you'd like to continue these discussions on how uh, resource portfolio and capacity planning can help you from a, uh, a scaled agile delivery perspective, you know, waterfall or hybrid, please let us know. We'd love to talk to you. Thanks for joining. Bye now.